There's a land where the mountains are nameless and the rivers run God knows where. There are lives that are erring and aimless and deaths that just hang by a hair. There are hardships nobody reckons. There are valleys unpeopled and still. There's a land and it beckons and beckons and I want to go back and I will. Those double D rings there and the D rings on the side are for thigh straps that allow me to control the boat a little with my legs when I'm running whitewater. So there you go. I got my 15 foot Novacraft Prospector all outfitted and ready for my big solo trip down the Bonnet Plume River. I got uh, spray deck outfitting on it with the ladder lock system using pop rivets in the hull. I got uh, webbing on for bow and stern airbags and lashing bank lines so I can put inflatable bags in the bow and stern. I got uh, D rings down in the front and on the side by the seats so I can uh, use thigh straps and white water. And I got other D rings in there as well so I can clip down my camera and my day bag and as well as bungees over the bow and stern which I'm gonna to use to tuck my throw bags under which I would grab and swim to shore so I'd have that canoe on the end of the rope if I did dump. There we go, it took a, a, a long time but um, I was working alone but I got it done. I'm super happy with the way it turned out so can't wait to get this thing into the water and uh, run the Bonnet Plume River.
the North Klondike Highway and we are officially on our way to Mayo. Mayo is where I'm going to be hopping on a float plane and flying off into the wilderness to land at Bonnet Plume Lake to begin my canoe expedition down the Bonnet Plume River. But we got a bit of a drive ahead of us. Beautiful scenery looks like so far we're going to have a good day for flying and I'm just going to take it in a little bit um, the last few hours before my trip starts. Okay, well here we are at Alcan Air in Mayo, Yukon. It was a long drive here from Whitehorse and I got here a little late. So I'm just waiting for my float plane to come back and it is gonna take me out and deposit me at Bonnet Plume Lake, which is a remote lake in the Mackenzie Mountains. And that is gonna be my starting point to paddle the Bonnet Plume River. I'm gonna take the Bonnet Plume for 350 kilometers to the Peel River and I'm gonna follow the Peel River down to a large gravel bar called Taco Bar where I'm gonna wait for another float plane to come and pick me up and fly me back here to Mayo so I can drive to Whitehorse. And this is a fly-in, fly-out adventure because it is just extremely remote. I'm gonna be in the true wilderness of the Yukon. I got some serious whitewater rapid challenges ahead. There's grizzly bears, there's black bears out there. I'm gonna to try to avoid them and just have a blast. I'm gonna be having to do some portaging and the water levels are high. So the rapids are gonna be challenging. Hopefully I can deal with those, but I'm looking forward to hopping on this float plane and enjoying a spectacular flight through the mountains. So my next big adventure is just about to start. single-engine otter and I'm gonna be flying out in this de Havilland beaver here so we're getting there the thing that's concerning me most right now is how much gear I'm bringing this is the most camera heavy trip I've ever done with uh, solar charging and tons of camera gear but uh, hopefully I can fit her all in the canoe this is my gear here that bag's got solar panels solar chargers in it and a whole bunch of outfitting so that and that are gonna go on the canoe this bag and almost that entire bag are full of camera gear. Um, we're still gonna actually have to strap the canoe to the struts of this float plane here too, because you can't put it inside. So it's a process that takes some, some skill. This one's uh, pretty heavy here. All right, I'm just gonna whip this back.
landed at Vaughn and Plume Lake and it is beautiful and I actually saw a cow and a calf moose right at the outlet of the river so I've already seen two moose. That's pretty cool. Um, end up getting in later today because I was tardy for my float plane charter. So I'm probably going to take some time just get my boat outfitted and do a little fishing here and I might not start heading down river till tomorrow. We'll see how I feel though. I'm going to get some food with me, get a line in the water and uh, get set. So anyways, just coming into land. Well, that's it. The float plane has left me all alone here in the remote wilderness on Bonnet Plume Lake. It's an interesting feeling when that float plane takes off and just leaves you to completely be self-sufficient in a very remote area, especially when you're all alone. So yeah, I'm going to get my bear spray out, uh, get my shotgun loaded up, get a bite to eat and start getting this canoe outfitted. I'm thinking I might uh, just hang out here today because I ended up not getting away um, on my flight till later than I thought. And by the time I get all my stuff ready to go, it is uh, you know probably going to be pretty later on the day. So I might just take some time to fish here. There's supposed to be some Arctic grayling in here and uh, head out first thing tomorrow morning. This is a pretty big lake, but I got dropped off on um, a decent beach. Should be half decent for camping and the outlet of the Bonnet Plume River is right over there. So I don't have too far to paddle on this lake. And uh, yeah, super excited um, to start putting miles behind me. Greeted with grizzly bear. Well, a quick scout showed me that there's actually a much better and flatter place to camp right down there, so I'm not gonna have to paddle anywhere. It means I gotta schlep all my stuff from here over to the point though. already like 6 30. Oh, feels good to be out here but I gotta admit I'm pretty tired. A lot of running around in white horse. So you know I did consider spending a day here to begin with anyways. Well it's not gonna be a day. It's gonna be a bit of time. Well, that's okay. I'll make up for it but two things I realized that my pickup isn't at the mouth of the bonnet plume. It's a ways down the peel. So I'm gonna have to be paddling. I don't know what I'll be really facing there. And uh, then I missed a day too. So I was supposed to have 13 days, but then I couldn't get a shuttle to Whitehorse when I thought I was because of just labor shortages, I guess. Then today was a bust because I got here late. So it's giving me about 10 days to do the bonnet plume. What was supposed to be almost 14 days is being cut down substantially which kind of sucks, but I think the current will be strong enough that uh, I'll be able to do it. It just means less time for other things like fishing and hiking, stuff like that. So hopefully I can make some decent time when the current's good and I don't have too much whitewater challenges in front of me. I'm a little concerned about that, but usually I find these things always work out. Yeah, 
uh, the system on this tent I really like. It just sets up quick. So this is a three person tent and uh, a little bigger than I need. I'm a big guy, so one man's a little small. So I usually go two, but you know what? My old two person tents were getting a little old and uh, really there wasn't a lot on the market right now. So I picked this up more for the family, but um, I figured why not bring it out here? It's amazing and like it's a hardcore mountaineering style tent. You could take this thing and camp on Mount Everest. And honestly, it's nice in the north to have a bigger tent especially uh, in the Arctic when you're doing those rivers because you can be weathered in for days. Even here, you can be weathered in for three, four days while you're waiting for a float plane. Nasty wind and heavy rain, and it's nice to have a bit of a space if you have to be in your tent for a long time. Uh, so yeah, that's why I don't mind bringing a larger tent and it's light for the size for sure. A bunch of these little berries around. Not sure what they are. I think they're maybe low bush Arctic raspberries. Might have uh, something to do with the large grizzly bear poop I saw over there, although that seemed to be full of like sages and grass and stuff like that, but not a ton of berries here, but I'm not feeling overly comfortable about camping by grizzly bear poop where there's a bunch of berries. Should be fine, and also there's literally nowhere else really to camp around here, so I'm gonna have to take it. Get my boat outfitted so it'll be good to go first thing in the morning. What I gotta do is I gotta inflate these airbags. And uh, what these do is they give your canoe extra buoyancy so you can take in more water and not swamp and still have control. And on top of that, if you do dump, they'll make it so your canoe floats higher in the water and will be less likely to be wrapped around a boulder and easier to get to shore because it'll be floating higher. Um, so pretty important, I think, when you're heading out on a serious whitewater trip. These canoes here have uh, some built-in flotation as well, so I'm just basically adding to that. Anyways, well, geez, that took a while. So I got the spray deck on, and what a spray deck is, is basically a tarp that covers your canoe, um, so it prevents it from filling up as quickly. You're still gonna take in water. It doesn't provide any buoyancy. Water still can get in, so it's not creating buoyancy like a kayak, but it means that you can bomb over some big waves and maybe to hit two or three big waves instead of one or two. Um, so it's a, a safety thing. It means I can run more rapids. It means I can run more rapids without having to unload my boat um, because when you're weighted heavily with all your gear, you take in more water. So this will prevent me from taking in water as fast. And the bow and stern airbags that I put in will help me float higher in the water when I do take in water and that'll allow me to control my boat more easily and will also help me if I dump. And then I got a lining rope at the back. I don't know how much lining there's gonna be on this river. I might swap it up for just a, you know, a stern line, but um, lining rope's great when you have to guide your canoe down the rapids. And then I put a large size 50 foot uh, um, long throw bag at the front and back. And I 
put them under bungees and clip them to the bow and stern respectively. So that means when, if I dump, not when, <laughs> I can grab that out and swim to shore and I'll have the canoe on the end of the rope and hopefully I can get to shore and wrap that around uh, a tree or a rock or something like that and let my canoe swing into shore so um, I don't lose it, which would suck because losing your canoe out here would pretty much be the end of the trip I'd have to um, get an emergency evacuation or attempt a crazy never-ending walk out of here over jagged sawtooth mountains so anyways yeah uh, I might do some fishing tonight uh, because I really want to fish this lake but I might just uh, organize my gear a little bit more um, take a few casts from shore and climb into bed we will see but um, there's definitely grayling in this lake good chance there's lake trout too so I'd like to give it a shot but that's it boat outfitted and uh, ready for some white water. I'm just gonna plug some batteries into my Goal Zero Yeti 500 here. So some juice, I brought a solar panel too. Charge those up. Beautiful, big, good size, that's for sure, look at that. This is what it's all about guys, I'm finally here. Man, ah oh, yes, I'm having so much fun right now. Another chunky grayling. Look at that. There's grayling number two. A little smaller than the first one, but a beauty still. Oh, they're coming right in here. There's a bit of a drop off here watching a catch on right now. Oh, bite. Oh, that's a fatty. One thing I love about grayling is they're uh, easy to get the hook out when you're using a single hook. Oh, that's gonna be making the bloopers real. Got my net. This grayling's huge. Whoa, ho, 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 ho. Well, that was pretty special. I caught at least eight grayling, maybe more, I don't know. Pretty much all while the moose was just grazing in the outlet of the bonnet plume where it's shallow over there. So I was catching grayling, looking at a moose and this little bird, I don't know what it was, some sort of seagull type thing. I really wanna go over 
and check out the mouth of that tributary and uh, be really nice to get some lake trout but I've already got a good meal in store for me now and uh, planning on going to bed early but then I just started having too much fun damn it so yeah I'm going to uh, cook these grayling up on the stove I would light a fire but all there is is shrub willow all over the place here um, and literally pretty much zero good wood so I'd have to go through these willow bushes and get a bunch of twigs and uh, it's kind of uh, futile so I'm sure I would be able to to do it but um, I have my stove so I'm gonna whip that up we're kind of at a valley bottom here and, and high in elevation still this is you know high up I'm gonna be descending in elevation with the river so we're gonna have more trees but uh, yeah not a lot of uh, firewood at all at uh, definitely not at arm's reach I would have to do a serious bushwhack to get some so yeah gonna cook this up on the stove it should be real good using this cold seal bird and trout yeah it's just gonna slit from Hole. right up to the top like that really you can kind of just pretty much rip the head right off and then it's got a ring in the top I was wondering what that was for but that's what it's for just hold it like that just use the side of my knife like this scale it Yeah, I might have to cut that in half, but mm, I can't wait to eat that. That's going to be good. Little old bay, baby. That one's done. The thick old one. Get that off. Don't want to waste any gas. Traveled a long way for this meal. Mmm. That is good. Well, it is late, probably, geez, I'm going to guess 11, 30, 12 right now. Lots of light still, land of the midnight sun. Amazing day. I was really tired and hungry when I got here. A lot of travel, a lot of anticipation. I mean, the flight was incredible. Um, jagged mountains everywhere beautiful amazing when you fly in the mountains sometimes you have to fly through a valley and you actually have to look up the float plane window to see the top of the mountains because they're taller than the elevation you're flying at which is pretty cool anyways i got some a little bit of food in me and um like there's just grayling coming like right up to the shore right now it's incredible they're coming right into like inches of water yeah as soon as i saw those fish jumping i knew i had to get out there take a few casts and Sure enough, from shore didn't take me long to get a beauty. Probably the biggest one today was the first one I caught, which was absolutely delicious. And uh, I headed out there and um, where I saw a bunch jumping, sort of where the, the current picks up and starts to 
flow down the bonnet plume and uh, sure enough there was a cow moose just sitting there probably the same one that I saw when the float plane landed we were taxiing up to the gravel beach here and uh, that was really cool so I got a good look at that uh, cow moose as I was catching grayling oftentimes in these uh, lakes the best spots are where the tributary comes in and I can just hear the tributary rushing down the mountain I can see it over there it looks extremely beautiful so tomorrow I might go over there and uh, give it a shot if um, it looks like the fish are active and uh, see what what I can come up with um, I bet there's lake trout in this lake they might be out a little deeper but I'm happy with the grayling that's for sure so yeah just incredible just the, the fishing beautiful fish and beautiful beautiful sight um, this is going to be the only lake on this trip so um, It'll be sad to leave it behind, but I'm super excited to see what lies downriver. The Bonnet Plume is supposed to be the most beautiful river in the Peel watershed. And uh, so I think that we're going to see some things that top this, believe it or not. So awesome day. I tried a little bit of gold panning. I brought a, I brought a gold pen and um, done a little research on panning for gold. And I uh, hope there's a chance that I managed to... Um, just find some gold dust or maybe a couple small nuggets or something like that because from what I understand you really never know especially in the Yukon so that would be pretty cool I also brought a fly rod so I'm going to be doing some fly fishing I might even get that rigged up tomorrow and see if I can't get one of these grayling on the fly that would be pretty sweet so oh man I, I'm so excited I, just, I don't even want to go to sleep but I have to because I got to get a good start on the day tomorrow so you know bunch of things aid into my time so I'm gonna to have to put a lot of miles behind me tomorrow but really looking forward to just everything that lies ahead and I already feel more chill you know uh, now that I got everything I know I have everything here I know um, the canoes outfitted everything's done um, that anticipation is pretty much gone and I just uh, feeling pretty confident that I'll be able to tackle whatever lies ahead. So I'm going to leave my food barrel kicking around in uh, grizzly country that's for sure. Take this and stash it in the willows. Lord of the Rings.